Welcome back, you beautiful nerds. I am Wildfire One. You are watching and listening to Nerds is the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. But uh, with me today is Laser Kid and J Mac. Yeah. So and the J Mac. So this is episode. I, I think I said one sixty eight, and uh, we're we're gonna talk about something important. I know we've been kind of gone for the last two weeks. I've been kind of sick. Uh, Sinuses are a bitch, man. Like they are a bitch. Like, I can do it. Yes. Allergies. The 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 fucking weather's changing, and God hates me. <laughs> That's the important thing. <laughs> the important thing that God hates me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to, and and I knew this happened earlier in the month, and a lot of and you probably everyone's probably talked about it enough, it was, but I really very recent. I was like early in the week, I think. Yeah, it was the first. It was. It, it, was, it uh, happened. Was on, it was on the first. On but we the didn't first. find out till the eleventh. We didn't. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about Aki Ak Akira Toriyama. Ak Akira Toriyama. Akira. Mm -hmm. A lot of us grew up with this guy. Like, oh, yeah. whether you know it or not, you grew up with this guy. If you've done Dragon Ball, if you've dealt with, with, what was it, uh, Dragon if Quest. Have, Dragon if you have Quest. played a video game if anytime in yeah. the last, like, three decades. If you, if you are aware of Chrono Trigger, influence. Chrono Trigger, one of the most, like, like best games out there depending on who you ask it has me i'll say it's the best game uh the mario games were literally influenced by his work in uh dr slump if you have played a video game at all you have a curio toriyama to thank yes because he inspired mario which saved the entire video game industry from collapse yeah chrono trigger mm -hmm. like i said chrono mm -hmm. trigger i mean trigger. Dragon Quest, Blue Dragon. Dragon Quest, Blue Dragon. He he was a big part of probably your childhood without even knowing. I know he's a big. I knew he's a big part of mine. I know yeah. LK. Oh, I'm Pokemon. a big. Yeah. I'm a huge Dragon Ball nerd. It was one of the first oh, yeah, things I talked about with you. A lot mm -hmm. of the Pokemon designs were inspired by uh, the same, like either Dragon Quest designs or very similar things as Dragon Quest designs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're getting to is, um, he died. He passed away. We lost a legend on the first of Absolutely. March, and uh, we—I uh, I know I posted this on our social media, but I don't feel like a one post is good enough for someone like mm. this. Like this guy was influential, and and he had so much, so much influence on my life, and and just from his art, just from his, his the things he did that that. I just feel like it's a, it's a definite mention. So, I mean, put it, the whole idea was to talk about it in this podcast, at least a little bit. We'll go with, we'll go with J-Mac first. J-Mac, is there anything you want to say about Akira Toriyama? I, I was fucking gutted when it happened. Like, it I just got my work and, like, LK had told me, like, Akira Toriyama died. I'm like, what? Yeah. And, like, I told literally everyone I knew, because, like, shit, man, like, what the That's... fuck? That's well, what I did too. Just like Kevin Conroy and some of the other like epic people that passed away mm -hmm. in the past recently, like you don't expect it to happen. You don't expect you he don't... was. I mean, he was old, but he wasn't that old. He was sixty-eight. Yeah. Well, even even then, like it was, it's just kind of mm -hmm. like we didn't expect it to go on oh, to, to like, be as quick. Like, yeah. No. For real. Like it was just like kind of out of nowhere, out and nowhere. like. A lot of the out like okay, a lot of the outpouring for him has been like has been wild. Like more people have mourned his death than et, like than whoever. That's what I wanted you to get to by the, the way. death of the Queen of England. Yeah. Um, yep. You have had entire nations like El Salvador and stuff. Like like the government of El Salvador posted like posts like saying the entire government is mourning his death. The president of fucking France, when like, like world a, leaders picture, mourning his death, yeah, like we have yeah. world leaders. You got world leaders mourning like, the mourning death. Him as one of the greatest of all time. Absolutely. Like when they literally all, wow. when all they did with when Queen Elizabeth died was rip, R.I.P. <laughs> too bad. <laughs> yeah, rip. We uh, sad for a is, second. Fucking like a week later, two weeks later. Whereas most of the world, because most of the world used to be part of the English Empire. Like rip bozo get fucked. Oh shit! <laughs> but but like, for this, Akira Toriyama was such a significant part of every like culture all around the world. Like in Mexico, like 
Dragon Ball Z was huge in Europe, mm -hmm. Mexico, it's Central America, everywhere. South America, ev like, everywhere. Well, you can go to just about even, anyone. Even the Chinese a, government yeah. commented on it. Yeah. No, to make a to make a point of this, they they were bigger in those places I mentioned than literally anywhere else. Like, because like there were restaurants like based on that theme. Yeah. Because, oh like, yeah. You, you oh can't yeah. Really do that because like mm, that's copyright infringement and like people are super afraid of that in the U.S. But like in those other places, like like we don't care. We're we're doing it anyway. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Um. And like just huge influences on everything across the world well huh, let me let me ask you guys this and I'm, and then i'm gonna go to okay and see what he mm -hmm. he has to say about this but um how many people can you go to and go hey what was your first anime and most people will say what dragon ball z A yes we'll say that like oh, and it's not anime. it's not just it, and you know we're gonna go we're gonna do ethnicity here it's not just like caucasian people it's 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 african-americans it's mm -hmm. asians it's you name it everyone loves dbz everyone loves dragon ball and it's because yes. it's a good story it's a good it's just great and so i wanted to put that out there like akira toriyama brought together the world in a sense akira toriyama uh without akira toriyama we wouldn't have an anime market in the united states straight up um, I gotta agree. Without, I gotta without agree. Dragon Ball and Toonami, there would not without Dragon Ball, there'd be no Toonami. And if there, you don't have Toonami blowing up, you don't have it also in action. If you don't have those two things, the anime market would be tiny, infinitesimal compared to what it is today. If you like anime today, you can thank Akira Toriyama. Yeah. Um, it would definitely be different. Personally, he's touched my life a lot of ways. I'm a huge Dragon Ball nerd. Pretty much everyone that knows me knows that. Um, Dragon Ball means the world to me. Um, and it was really sad. It, and yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But Akira Toriyama was a very private person. Well, very rarely got out in the spotlight. He didn't want to be. Mm -hmm. Um, that's actually why it took so long for us to find out. Is his family didn't want that information to go out. They had their own funeral and everything that was really closed with close family and friends only, because that's the kind of man he was. He didn't want. The, main, the crazy limelight. He wanted to just tell a story. He even admitted um, in an interview uh, recently that or not an interview, but a speech he wrote for a Lifetime Achievement in Animation Award that he was going to be getting this year that he wrote his uh, acceptance speech for. He feels guilty. He felt guilty about it because he never even watched most of the Dragon Ball anime. He doesn't watch anime. He just wanted to tell his stories and draw fun things. Hmm. He, he, that's just the kind of guy he was. He was a really chill, down-to-earth guy. Uh, and we, we lost one of the greats. The last time I felt the way I felt losing Toriyama was when we lost Jim Henson. Jim Henson? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That, I know that It's an absolute visionary. I know that the three of us were hit pretty hard. Uh... But I would say out of all the three of us, maybe you were hit the hardest. It, okay. took, me, it, it took me several days to get out of that funk. It uh, took me several, several days. It, it, it what, what, what hit me wasn't even immediately sadness. It's just this empty, not knowing how to feel about it feeling. It just a, There was definitely a sense of loss, but I, it took me a while to really get my emotions out. You know, It's like losing a good friend that you knew your whole life. Yes, you know. I mean, um, I got into Dragon Ball in 1995. I got played Chrono Trigger in 1995. I was a 14 year old. I'm I'm 42. I'm gonna be 43 later this year. Yeah. That's most of my life. It's it's yeah. That's like like I said. It's like a friend you've had for a long time, and mm -hmm. it's uh and it's sad. It's sad. It's like it I is, Kevin Conroy was a big hit for me. Uh, that was a big hit for me too. Not to the same degree, but it was a big hit. Um, the guy who played Willy Wonka, if I had his name a second ago, it's gone. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, Gene thank Wilder. you. Oh, Gene Wilder. Man. Gene Wilder, when he passed away, it really hit me hard. Uh, even Tom Petty, as far as you know, going to music. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's... Akira Toriyama will be missed. And I, I'd like to think that his legacy is going to live on through the next series of Dragon Ball uh, animations. Uh, it, Dragon Ball Daima, the one that's coming out next, um it was his baby he was going to be directly involved we know that they've made several episodes it's going to be the closest to toriyama's vision we've had since the 90s well i've heard um, i've also heard that he 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 picked a uh someone to take over for his work yeah uh toyotaro uh yes. has been doing the dragon ball super manga for the last while and has been his understudy 
And the plan was always to pass it on to Toyotaro eventually. But that eventually is now. Yeah, eventually happened a lot quicker. So uh, Surprise! Quicker. Surprise! So, one, yeah. one of the most heartbreaking things I read um, in his wake was Toyotaro's comment, which was, I just wanted to make manga so that my sensei would say that I did good. Oh, wow. And that's just, oh, man. That, well, I mean, who doesn't, want, who doesn't want to impress the person that they feel is like... Is their teacher. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Toyotaro, for those that don't know, started off as a doujinshi artist. He started off under the handle of Toible, doing a uh, manga version of Dragon Ball AF. Yes, that stupid, silly um, meme Dragon Ball series. He made a manga for it. Hmm. And that got him noticed. And that's what got him into working with Toriyama to make the Dragon Ball Super manga, uh, which originally was just adapting the Dragon Ball Super anime. But when the anime ended, uh, well, Toyotaro kept going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's there's plenty. Dragon Ball's not going anywhere. If you're worried about Dragon Ball, that's that's not the loss. We're going to keep we're going to have Dragon Ball probably till the end of time. <laughs> probably after I'm gone, that's for sure. Oh gosh, absolutely. Uh, it, the, the 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 sadness is losing an absolute visionary. Yeah, and I mean, gosh. So yeah. with that that said, guys, we'll give we'll give uh, Akita Toriyama a nerd is new sexy entertainment moment of silence. Okay, moments moments over. <laughs> So, uh, the, the, so that being said, we're going to move on to the actual topic. The actual topic is another anime. It's another anime. It's, it's an anime that was adapted into a live action on Netflix, guys. I and wonder what we could be talking about. Yeah. I, gee, I wonder. Um, Bebop, isn't it? What's that? It's, uh... it's Cowboy Bebop, isn't it? Oh, oh God damn. You were on that podcast, J Mac. <laughs> I was on that podcast. Uh, yes, I was. Son of a bitch. You know, you know what it is? You know what it is? It's the Avatar, the Last Airbender. Oh. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't give I've you guys heard, a. I've heard, I've heard, heard bad shit. I've heard I bad too. shit. Uh, it, it, I've heard that it's the equivalent of jingling keys in front of people who are fans of Avatar being. Oh my look, god! Look, Kiyoshi Warriors, look, look, <laughs> jingle, 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 jingle. No. <laughs> look, look what we did. Uh, I mean, I, it, anything has to be better than the movie adaptation. I've heard it's better than that. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, but like literally a turd on the side of the road. Is yeah, the movie. <laughs> I mean, it, at least it's a fresh turd, right? Um, a fresh turd that doesn't have anything to do with Shyamalan Ding Dong. Uh, so <laughs> Shyamalan Ding Dong. So no, we're talking about we're going to talk about the one of the few adaptations Netflix did from an anime to live action that actually did good, and we're talking about One Piece. Uh, yeah. Who could have guessed that? <laughs> <laughs> Where where do we start? Like, oh god! Oh, we can start. So my parents, who are complete virgins to One Piece at all, okay. I, I recently showed to them. Their my dad's first impression was like, just how incredibly contagiously positive Luffy is. Oh, right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Like, um, and he, like, honestly, okay. Let, well, let me start from the casting. Honestly, the casting was immaculate the people they Just chose kiss. for each of the characters were amazing i was a Yaki little worried Roy. about yeah. yuffie i was a little at first at first the first my first impression was like mm -hmm. ah but then i saw him act yeah no and yaki godoy as luffy was perfect oh, fucking yes. great uh, i don't know that i don't know nami's actor i don't know sanji's actor I'm they sure were great they were all great they were all amazing. Kenyu was fucking Zoro. Was... Kenyu, he is Zoro. Him. You can't argue. That is yeah. Zoro. We, we, we know him from uh, the Rorona Zoro. Not the Rorona. The Roroni Kenshi live action Japanese. Yes. That's he, apparently, he was really good there. Which I haven't watched that either. I got to watch that because I, I mean, love I Kenshi. Too. I, I, me too, they chose man. him because he's popular in Japan, but also because he's just really fucking good with swords. He's a badass. Like, he did yeah. such a good job. You know, and what? okay, what's great? Each of the actors, like, Lu like the Luffy's actor, took up sailing in real life. Now, that's, uh, that's fucking cool. Sanji's actor, like, learned how to be a chef. Wow. Uh, Dang. And like, even cooked for the people on set at the for the show. Damn. Um, 
He also he also learned and now teaches uh like martial arts and kickboxing and like uh capoeira capoeira. Okay. Um Zoro's actor has always been amazing with sword martial arts apparently. But he he had to learn how like they made a special prop sword for his mouth. Mouth, yeah. He had to learn how to use. Because I imagine, I imagine that would be uncomfortable as fuck, dude. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He's talked about it. He said it was, yeah. And they, they minimized the use of, of Suntory for that. Probably for that exact reason. Yeah. yeah. He said that his mouth would be cut up after those scenes, actually. Oh, shit. Mm. But he's, like, he, he's like, I enjoyed doing them all the fucking time. <laughs> he'd, like, talk about how his mouth was cut up, and he'd laugh, and everyone was like, what? And like, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. His tongue's all like, it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, he just needs a drink. See, but yeah. going on, but going on from the casting, the casting was perfect, even even for the villains. Oh my god! Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, like whoever they got for Arlong and for Buggy, ugh. Buggy, Buggy, dude. I was just about to say, Buggy. I, at first, I was like, they really got to find someone great for him, and god damn it, they did. The and, two best casting though, got to go with Garp. Okay. The Scottish Chef, 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 chef. was amazing. Yes! They nailed them both. <laughs> the, the two old men, they nailed them, and I was so happy they had a scene together. So, so I really, okay, I really loved what they did with Kuro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His casting, Mihawk. Yes. Oh, God, that is Mihawk, straight up. They just pulled oh, out of the oh, manga, gave him physical life. King God, Mihawk. <laughs> Uh, oh I, saw, I, I saw a drawing when this was when this was new and it's just like mm. mihawk i speak in curse i uh i i can't think of one character that i didn't like like one actor Usopp was amazing Us oh, was Usopp great. was great oh yeah oh yeah i am okay i am so glad they didn't give him the long nose yeah like obviously the long nose in the manga was kind of like a pinocchio reference because he's a liar yeah a serial liar a good-hearted liar but a serial liar like that's part of his charm yeah but mm -hmm. like i'm so glad they didn't give him like a six inch long nose in the, the prosthetic would have looked would have looked ridiculous it oh, would have looked so real bad. weird yeah bitch, it would have been so bad it would have looked really ridiculous it would have been his far. actor was amazing all uh, every actor was amazing and you could tell they all really wanted to be there and really wanted this to succeed and it, oh, yeah. it was just the they might they might have changed a few things but even the things they changed yeah wasn't it's a big a close deal note. They, they, they treated yeah. it as a close note yeah well, because because ichiro oda san was working so heavily yep. with them yep and like he he vetoed a lot of things and then like he approved a lot of other things to me it feels like the beginnings of One Piece, as he would tell it now that he's had these 25 years of experience that he's had. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Like, let me, let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. Netflix, I'm talking directly to you, okay? Good luck. <gasps> whatever you, I know, but whatever you guys, like, everything you did, everything that, that the, the notes and everything that, like, the cliff notes from the creator and everything, follow that! From every other fucking anime adaptation yes. you do from the from here on out. Please, please. Never, ever, ever push another creator out again. Let an let let Cowboy Bebop and now Avatar be your lessons. Oh, what you're not not let's not let's not just stop at Cowboy Bebop. Death Note. <laughs> Ooh. See, that one's so bad that I forget it exists. Oh, <laughs> There's only one good thing about Death Note. And there's yeah. the voice act. No, the well, yeah. <laughs> two good things about Death Note. It was the, it was the actor that played the um uh oh, shit, the Shimigami, yeah. William Defoe? William Defoe. Oh, William Defoe. Okay, he, that would be a great Ryuk. I have he he did an immaculate job on that. But like everything else was just uh, like they took so much creative creative like power over this and they just Fucked it up. They oh. gotta stop doing that. Um, I did hear the Yu Yu Hakusho adaptation. Took yes, out of One Piece. The, I hear they did a good job. And that, that's another one I want to. I'll give a, a some a good mention to is Yu Yu Hakusho was amazing. Yeah. One Piece. One Piece was just it was a masterpiece. Yeah, it's like I literally have only one gripe and way and one way that I would write it differently, but like it is it's so small and it's like at the end of the, it's in the final arc of the anime. Uh -huh. Not the anime, the, the the show. The show. It, it it was so minor, like 
it was like the showdown between the final showdown between Luffy and Arlong. And it's just like, there were ways I would have had it done differently to make it more impactful. But I even agree, then, I agree. the way they did it was still like, I felt like when Arlong brought out his sword, it was just there for like a second for Luffy to break. And like, no, I would have rather like Nami run away and then Luffy and Arlong be talking while Arlong swinging that fucking sword around, like trying to fight Luffy and stuff. And then Luffy break it. You know, like well, Arlong maybe talking about how the sword's unbreakable. Elongated a little bit. Elongated yeah, because it, yeah. it seemed like the fight was yeah, short. No, like the, the, it was oh, yeah. weird. What was weird to me in that scene was like the dialogue was really weird because like he he was just standing there with the sword while Nami and Luffy are just standing there and then he swings the sword at Luffy and then they're standing there again while they talk and, and for that to be the worst part of the entire series and yet still be fucking amazing and still hit the same emotional notes yes. as him be like used and breaking the sword like ah oh. oh man like that means it's an amazing show yes. Yeah. They did. They did a. They did an immaculate job. Like they. They got Luffy's backstory in perfectly. I really enjoyed the added backstory of uh, Helmeppo and Kobe. Yeah, that was some good stuff. Absolutely. God, Helmeppo. God fucking damn, man. Yes, I yeah, mean it was a little weird at the end where like Garp turned out to be testing the whole time. I felt like they could have alluded to that a little better. Yeah. But, like. At yeah. The same time. You know, it is. Yeah, it is what it is. What it is. Yeah. It, it yeah. does feel like it was just kind of like rushed in that aspect. Yeah. The seat. Okay. The special effects. We have to talk about those. <laughs> oh, of course. It's very impressive. Most of the special effects were actually practical effects. The yeah. best kind of effects. Yes. yes. Like all the fishmen was makeup, basically. Mm -hmm. Which is incredible. I'm so. I was so expecting them to be like bad CGI, and then like especially we've all okay. We have all seen. The god awful CGI that was Mr. Fantastic in every iteration of live action. Every iteration of Mr. Fantastic has been trash. Like they just don't do the stretchiness right. Which is a large part of why I'm like, they're not, it's not gonna work. Luffy is his whole personality is being the stretchy boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gum gum this, gum gum that. <laughs> they used like framing and uh, camera angles and perspective so perfectly with a lot of his like stretchiness that it just worked. Even in like a couple moments where you could tell it was a little rough, it just worked. And the actor hit yeah. like Luffy's attitude, his lucky, happy go lucky attitude perfectly. Yeah. Like they got, they, they changed events around, they changed story bits around. Yeah, I did they notice that. There. But all of the characters behave the way they should in mm -hmm. the given situations that they're throwing them. The important thing about this adaptation, the characters were get done completely justified. Like yeah. there was there was nothing like, that fell out of character for they, any of them. They, they rewrote the Captain Kuro scene as more of a slasher horror, which was really cool. Honestly. Yeah, honestly, they uh, made yeah. it feel a little bit more terrifying in that regard, in my opinion. Agreed, although it still very much felt like him. Yeah, what? they they solidified his deadliness too in killing the the butler dude, or not the butler, the, the, the accountant. Mary, yeah. yeah, poor Mary. Because like in the anime, Mary survived. In the anime, spoiler alert, Mary survived in the anime. No, 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 spoiler well, alert. If you haven't watched One Piece yeah. and watched the, the the live action, then something's yeah. fucking wrong with you. At this point, you're, you're, it's your purple. If yeah, you're watching this and you're you haven't watched it. Um, How dare you, motherfucker! He kill like that's the dip like he kills Mary. In this iteration, but like a very, a very brutal it. way too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, stabbing him through with all five fingers and pulling out, and then the the, the very the glasses. Are... It's like oh shit! Yeah, yeah. They can't, well, like that they attack can't... is identical. Yeah. in the mm -hmm. anime, but in yeah. the anime logic, he survives it. Yeah, they kept all like the mannerisms of everyone, which was great. Like because even without his glasses, you knew you saw him adjusting his glasses like that in the live action. And it was kind of weird. They didn't do it as much, so like it's not as noticeable. But then it still was just as impactful when you see him do it, like mm -hmm. when he's got the full glove on. He's like, Ugh. and Buggy. I can't. I keep going back to Buggy. Oh gosh, Buggy! Yeah, buggy. Like Perfect. you'd expect. You'd expect when you're talking about CGI, the 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 moment where you see like his body parts it come up, split apart, like, split it apart. So like it looked good. I was expecting to cringe when I saw that. I was expecting to go, oh god, Netflix, why? Instead, I was like, holy shit, that looks good. Yeah. yeah no, they like they really so CGI is better in low light 
they really used the lighting to of a of a circus tent to their advantage. Oh yeah, and especially in that aspect, it was it was mm. very well done. And it's just Buggy in general, like yeah. as the character, the actor, jo- they gave him a more jokery vibe here, and it was cool. yes. And maybe that's why I fell in love with him some more because I could see the Joker in him, and I was like, yeah. And it's also really no secret that uh, Buggy is Oda's favorite character. <laughs> I literally know a secret. Oda is open about it, which is why Buggy is still so prominent. Every like, you you, you would think Buggy he would, is the luckiest man alive in that. Universe. You would think he is one of the like, well, just some one-off character, but no, he appears. So I'm not going to spoil anything. He appears so many times later in the story. Oh yeah, he does. and is incredibly relevant to how Luffy does things, and it's wild. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very rare when I watch a uh, live action adaptation to an anime, especially on Netflix, mm-hmm. that I'm like, and it's happened twice with this and, of course, Yu Yu Hakusho. And I was, I'm like, oh man, it's done. I want more. And this <laughs> one. You know, so LK and I watched it together, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I was like, LK, it just came out. You and I are watching this. You don't get a say in the matter. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to argue with watching One Piece. <laughs> You're not arguing with me anyway. Watch it. (laughs) (laughs) Duct tape your eyes open. You're going to fucking watch this. I'm going to put you in that clockwork orange machine where it props your eyes open. (laughs) No, it's Netflix One Piece. I don't want to watch it. That's actually good. (laughs) What the heck? Yeah, honestly, like that that is the natural reaction to typically any Netflix anime live action. Why? (laughs) Why? (laughs) (laughs) So... But my point is, is, is we wa- I watched it and I didn't want it to end. I wanted more. Yeah, like, no, I even wanted more ghosts. Like, Axe Hand Morgan was great. Like they even did his metal jaw really well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I was very um, impressed. And we talk about the ship designs because oh the uh, the yeah. the going Mary yes the going Mary the uh, Baratier all of the ships just speaking damn. of the going Mary. So the music is largely an original score. I don't know the composer's name, but I forget. I looked it up like yesterday and then I promptly forgot because I have ADHD. It's all good. Um, But uh, I looked at the composers and um, it's all an original score except for one and maybe, well, okay, two songs if you, two songs if you're really paying attention. Yeah, that song in, in the first episode. I, but, I, I didn't hear it the first time and I heard it the yeah. second time. I went, oh. One song, though, the biggest, most, like, the biggest, most recognizable song. Yeah, we are. At, yeah, and it, so they've just gone through all this stuff and they've kind of, so had they played it at the beginning, it would have it would have been very much of a hey, remember this song from the anime? Look, here's yeah. that song. Hey, remember it? Here's that song. <laughs> not gonna lie, marks like me would have gone, yeah, we are. But otherwise, it wouldn't have. Yeah, been no, you song. you you are you are largely the mark, LK. I yeah. know. You I'm are well, the mark. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He's not a fan of One Piece. He fucking He's hates not. One. One Piece is stupid. I don't have over 800 episodes on DVD. I don't know what you're talking about. One Piece is only your number one favorite anime. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After the Kuro arc, they get the going Mary, and, like, he names it that in honor of Mary because he's dead now. Yeah. They're honoring him. And then they set sail, and you hear, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, which was kind of an epic moment. Oh, absolutely. Like, and they unfurl the sails and it's just like, uh, when I, when I happened, get jingles all throughout my body. What happened? I kid you not. He teared up. I did. It's true. I, I absolutely did tear up. It's a moment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, LK absolutely fucking was nearly crying in my it in felt it ball. felt I was like, oh my god. That so that weird. moment was a com- was comparable to me. To when I watched um, uh, the Netflix mm-hmm. uh, anime version of Castlevania when they did Bloody Tears. Yes, it's very much like that. It was very comparable when because when the moment they did that and they didn't do the normal bloody, they did the rock Bloody Tears with a heavy metal, yeah. and I about I about creamed my pants when I saw that, and it was the yeah. same. Look. That's the same feeling I got with One Piece. I, oh, I yeah. look, I actually jizzed a bit when when that one came when when uh, this song oh, came yeah. up. It was good. It was it was very good. 
I, I had to do a little bit of laundry after that night. <laughs> <laughs> the but you know, let's go back to the music. You were saying that the two scores, the 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 audio in this fucking like this series is great. Yeah, no, like like for it being an original score, you would think like uh like it was exactly what it needed to be for yes. a live action adaptation. Absolutely. It felt very much like Pirates of the Caribbean meets whatever the hell one piece's music yeah. is. <clears throat> um when something was scary they had they had a creepy yeah. vibe to oh, it yeah. when something oh, was yeah. was 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 something that wanted <clears throat> was like heart pulling at your yeah, heartstrings like, they where, had that where you'd see where you'd see curl just like do his weird like turn and like weird smirk oh oh, oh god or like and his two minions like stalking through the whole that gave me chills man buggy in the, the circus the, tent the music made it work like all the minions look good everything looked good i mean uh what was the what was the uh the female villain from the first first episode? alvita alvita yeah oh god even she they was great her perfect they nailed her Holy i mean she, i don't because wasn't she a big lady in this the anime she was yes. huge she, she was is a, it seemed didn't seem like she was as big yeah but didn't seem like she was as big but i still liked it right they got her like she wasn't as big but her personality was big. yes her personality was perfect Oh yeah. Like they they so Alvita was such a small insignificant character in the original. Yeah. He in in the beginning which the episode 1 was episode 1 was not whatever episode later she becomes significant. Episode 1 okay, was the okay. beginning. Okay. Yes, mm. I agree. In the beginning of One Piece, even in the manga and the anime, she was such an insignificant meaningless character. She was literally a fat lady who gets beat up. Yeah. I see it. They gave her such a huge personality in the in this version. I think that, like, it was great. Her like manga and stuff, like she, she she was clearly a narcissist in those versions too. Yes, yeah. Like, you know they they crank they took her and cranked her up. Like, oh, to great. like twenty. It was great. Yeah. So let's let's do it. Let's do this. Uh, rate the anime. Ten. Eight. I'm, well, okay, nine. I would give it a seven. I'm not as big as a fan as you guys, but yeah. I still love it. Um, rate the li- damn good. Rate, damn good. Rate the live action. Uh, eight point five. Wait, wait. The other one was the anime, not the. the yeah, the one. first one was the anime. Sorry, ten then. Yes. Okay, then so this would be my eight. Okay, so so what what did you give it, J Mac? I gave the anime a nine. I uh, like early anime. I, like the early anime that this season was adapting. I would uh, probably give it like a seven, eight. I, the early parts, I'd probably give an eight. Okay, uh, seven, and for the live action, I give a ten. Oh my god, that that should action. tell you something. Should I give an eight? But it's still. Good. I I give the live action a like a nine, compared to like the like the stuff it was adapting. It's definitely better in my opinion. I, I honestly, yeah. it was entertaining. It everything everything seemed good. Plus, and, and uh, plus, I might have went into it with really low expectations because. I we all did because yeah, no it but... being an anime it, it being a net a, a netflix live action <laughs> anime adaptation mm-hmm. set the bar below the ground honestly yeah, we I, I i was almost like i went into it going oh god do i really want to watch this because i was Same. dreading that we were going to have another conversation like we did about he-man i was just going to say that like i was expecting That's another he-man I'm, I'm, so we're going back to one piece because yes please please on, please right? um, yes there was one other criticism i had and i've actually shared this with lk before um nami's betrayal of the crew yeah i, so, I can get where you go on i think their biggest mistake was releasing it all at once they rushed it. Had they, As they do. had they released it an episode at a time, the entire like those those in the know would not spoil it. it I don't think. Hopefully, they better not have. Or you're not real fans of One Piece. Had it come out episode by episode, people like the people who don't know about it would have had a week to stew in Nami's betrayal of Luffy to Arlong. I think that the, the the I think that the depiction where they fucked up on this is that they only had so many episodes to work with yes. as opposed yeah. to the anime if they had literally just one or two more episodes it would have been a 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah. Probably. Um they they st- okay even that even so they nailed all of the emotional beats that they needed to. But okay. 
the one moment that I was hope like that I was like sitting there like biting my nails hoping they would get right. Luffy, help me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where where Nami is on the ground. And our and everyone is just everything is shit's fucked. People are going to die because Arlong is just that evil. Yeah. And and Nami at this point is helpless to do anything about it. And she has realized her helplessness. And she's just there. And she's and Luffy just comes up to her unprompted. Even after she told him to go away, and she just in tears says, "Luffy, help me." By and the just, way, means. and he puts his hat onto her. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the so way, perfectly. By oh. the way, in the anime, that gave me the exact same feels it gave me in the live action. Yes, yes, yes definitely. Yes. I, I was, I was tearing up. I was about ready to fucking cry. Yeah, it was, it was so good. Um, I did cry. Yeah, no, he did cry. <laughs> He, he cried a lot. You know what? It's okay to get emotional. Like, yeah. I knew that. I do that. Okay, the, the framing of the scene after that where, like, it like it has Luffy very angrily walking forward and, like, it pans to, like, Sanji and then Luffy's in the background walking forward and Sanji just, like, throws his cigarette to the ground mm-hmm. and, like, they all just, like, start... Do, they do the... They did the walk! They did the they crew did. walk! They did do the crew walk, a lot, yes. A lot of people will say they didn't, but they did. I think they and did. It was, it was very impactful in manga and anime the way they did it in manga and anime. But this isn't manga and anime. This is live action. Yes. And yeah. because of that, the way they did it is more impactful. Yeah, no. Like, a lot of people action. fail to understand that the live action is a different medium. Exactly. Yeah. Like, stuff I, you can I, get I, away I, with as opposed to stuff you can't get away with. A small handful of people who were nitpicking shit and just like, look. This is the single greatest adaptation we've had of all time. It is nearly... It is nearly perfect. Oh, you know what? Are you really going to nitpick it and risk Netflix not renewing it? You know what? This is what I say to those people. You have a problem with that? Go watch Cowboy Bebop. Yes. <laughs> Serious. Like, Absolutely. Go, if, if you have a problem with it done right, go watch it done wrong. Yeah. Again, Netflix, follow what you did with, with One, One Piece. Piece. Yeah. One Piece. If you're going to do this shit, do it right. Do it right. Don't do it. What's, what's great about it is that Oda himself is the one who made the announcement that it had been renewed for a second season already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's the Which thing. Which was my next question to you, so thank God you answered that. It was within like two weeks of yeah. the show's er- original airing that like the second season was confirmed. Yeah. The the telling of the backstories, no. the tell the storytelling in general, even when it was different from the original, was well done. Yeah, no, and okay, one of the main themes in it was what it like and it was very it was touched on the first episode, and people who are paying attention will know. One of the things that a lot of people miss is in episode two, like like episode one, first of all, is like where Luffy says to like where Kobe's like having kind of an existential crisis because he wanted to be a Marine all this time and he just saw like these Marines treated a child like absolute dog shit. Yeah. And that like the pirates are the ones defending this child from the Marines. And Luffy said to him, well, if there's good pirates and bad pirates, then there's good Marines and bad Marines. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's an emotional scene at the end of the show between Kobe and Luffy where it's like, be a good pirate and be a good Marine. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just a callback to that. But like the whole show, the whole season is about what it means to be a good pirate versus a bad pirate and what it means to be a good Marine versus a bad Marine as well. Yeah. Like in episode two, it really illustrates that because Nami hates pirates because mm-hmm. she's only ever been with bad pirates. Yes. And then like when Luffy frees all the people in like the circus and they're like, wait, you're, so are you our new captor? He's like, no, you're free. He's like, you're a pirate, aren't you? He's like, I'm not that kind of pirate. I'm a good yeah. pirate. I'm, I'm a, a good pirate. I'm a different kind of pirate. Yeah, I'm a different kind of pirate. And like Nami just looks up like as if she has just seen a ghost. <laughs> like, like what the fuck did I just hear? Like the what the fuck you just said? It's good. I, I highly recommend mm-hmm. you guys listening Absolutely. to watch this. Why, if you Absolutely. haven't if you haven't watched it by now, why the hell are you watching this video? Yeah. 
It's like, go watch it and watch the rest of this. You know what Get I mean? Get off here and go to Netflix. Yeah, because it's it's worth that. it. It's worth it. Uh, it's it's a very like, good show. We I could go on forever and ever about this. We could. Right. We should probably end the podcast. Yeah, but, we could probably. go in circles about uh, all night. With that, with that, guys, we're going to end the episode. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week when we do another podcast. So then we want you to stay nerdy, stay sexy. Always. Uh, just a quick test, guys. Would you talk for me? Penis. Penis. Okay, penis and boobies. (laughs) There's some bonus content right there.